Hello my creative critters and welcome to Sketching with Sarah. I'm Sarah and today's video is another episode of my 500 drawing prompt series. If you haven't seen my previous episodes or my first video in this series in particular, I did establish a few rules for myself going forward in this series. One of the rules being if there's more than one prompt on a page, I'm combining all of those prompts into one drawing. And if there's only one on a page, I'm doing the whole spread worth of prompts in one drawing. So since the next page is just one prompt and there's three prompts on the first page, I decided to combine the first two into a drawing and then the last one on the first page with the one on the second page, if that makes sense. I won't lie, these two prompts together was a real challenge because the prompts were Family Crest and Spaceship. At first I was stuck on the Family Crest part because I just really didn't want to design a Family Crest and I didn't even know where to begin with to do that. So since another quote unquote rule I made for myself was to include an animal in some way to make it interesting for myself, I was thinking maybe a family crest for a family of animals or something, I don't know. But I also have to include that spaceship prompt too. And to combine that with a family crest, I thought about all the animals humans have launched into space and what if they all had a family crest? Because they did all do a common thing, whether they survived or not, which I guess could make them a family. But again, I don't even know where to begin to design a family crest. I guess it would have a spaceship on it or maybe in the shape of a spaceship, maybe. And if I really had to, I know I could definitely come up with one. But then my brain was like, what if instead of a family crest, like it's meant to be interpreted, what if it means literally a family's crest toothpaste? I know for me personally, growing up after my brother and I got over the whole mint toothpaste is too spicy phase, my family shared a tube of toothpaste, and from what I remember it was Crest toothpaste. So keeping the animals that went into space idea, I wasn't sure if I wanted to have all of the animals who died trying to get into space or who didn't survive the way back as maybe ghosts as a family sharing toothpaste in the morning or maybe a mixture of both the animals who survived and the ones that didn't brushing their teeth with the toothpaste or the alive ones brushing but the ghosts not because I don't think ghosts need to keep up with dental hygiene when they don't have real teeth unless there's ghost toothpaste then anyway needless to say my brain was really being stretched to come up with an idea to combine these two prompts while deciding on what animals to use I learned a ton about the animals that went into space and how some of them died and why they tried to put that certain animal in space and what we were hoping to learn from it. And I learned that cockroaches were the first animals to give birth in space that we know of, which is technically a real family that was in space, but I really, 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 really didn't want to have to look up cockroach images to study and draw them. So I took the artistic liberty to eliminate that. Plus do cockroaches even have teeth? I found this whole animals in space topic really, really fascinating and I would love to do a dedicated video all about this topic maybe if you guys are interested to learn more about the animals we launched into space like dogs and cats and lizards with their arms cut off. So please tell me in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in from me in the future. Maybe we'll do a sketching session of me drawing these as I talk about them. So by now you can tell that I went with two monkeys as the focus of this illustration and I decided to have one of them be like a parent monkey applying toothpaste to the toddler monkey's toothbrush as the toddler monkey is playing with his little toy spaceship and I might end up adding a little space themed pajama top for him too but we'll see. Maybe this little monkey saw the other monkeys going into space on the news and maybe he wants to be an astronaut someday too. I decided to base the monkeys in this drawing on a rhesus monkey named Abel and a squirrel monkey named Baker. These were two female monkeys that were launched into space together and since the rhesus monkey is a bit larger than a squirrel monkey, I decided to make the parent monkey who was applying that toothpaste a rhesus monkey and the little boy monkey a squirrel monkey like Baker. On May 28th, 1959, these two monkeys became the first to successfully return to Earth from spaceflight. The monkeys survived 32 times the pull of Earth's gravity and were weightless for 9 minutes out of their 16 minute flight. It makes me feel a little bit better that at least these monkeys weren't in space for as long as I thought they would be, but I still have very mixed feelings about animals in space in general. I mean, if you look at the contraption that these monkeys were strapped into, it really looks sad and confined, but honestly, I'm not a scientist or whatever, so I'm hoping this was probably the reason they survived is being so contained like that. And I think for liftoff, human astronauts had to be strapped in to something similar as well, so I really don't know anything about it. 
but if you just look at it, it does look kind of sad because we honestly don't really know if that monkey even wanted to be in space and they probably didn't and they just had to go along with it, you know? It's just a very mixed feeling topic for me, but it is interesting nonetheless. Also next Friday is the 62nd anniversary of Miss Baker and Abel going into space. I should have saved this video for next week maybe, but I might do a mermaid video for the end of May since that's last Friday in May, but we'll see. While sketching the posing for these monkeys in my drawing, I used a mixture of references of humans in stock images applying toothpaste or of a toddler playing with a plane toy. And I tried to combine that with images I saw of rhesus and squirrel monkeys. And it was a real challenge and to be honest, I still don't think the proportions worked out all that well, but for the amount of time I spent on it, I'm not mad at it. I can just imagine this drawing in color and I might revisit this in a digital drawing sometime too. This is one of the reasons I love working with prompts is because the goal for me in these challenges is to stretch my imagination and just see where it takes me. If I didn't have these two prompts, I guarantee I would have never gone down that rabbit hole learning about all kinds of animals that were thrown into space, and I would have definitely not have drawn this wholesome and cute scene of this little monkey about to brush his teeth. So after I got the main sketch in, by now you can see I went in with ink just to make the lines stand out a little bit more. And like I've mentioned in my other episodes of this series, I can't really go too crazy with ink or any other wet-ish medium because this paper does bleed pretty quickly and I'm hoping maybe one day there will be a mixed media prompt book so that I can go nuts with watercolor and everything in it but it's probably not cheap to have 500 drawing prompts in a book without the paper this thin because it would be way thicker and heavier than it is already. So I guess if I really want to work in mixed media like I enjoy doing, I guess I'll have to transfer it to my mixed media sketchbook, but I'm lazy, so this is what you get for now. The ink brush pen that I'm using to do this line art is a little bit frayed at the tip of it, so it's really hard to get a nice tapered and fine line. So this drawing ends up looking a little bit more scribbly than I intended, but with the supplies I had, I think I made it work as best as I could. For a fun prompt exercise, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching the process and listening to my thoughts, trying to come up with an idea to combine these odd pair of prompts. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to leave it a like, and subscribe to my channel for more art and animal related content. I upload a new video every Friday and I would love to have you join my little creative critter community. Say that 10 times fast. And I hope you'll follow along on my YouTube journey. If you made it this far, leave me a comment and let me know if you're interested to learn more about the animals who went to space, like the fish who were able to swim normally in space after just being hatched from their eggs. Or if you don't want to comment about any of that, how's your week been? Have you done something creative this week? Let's chat! I respond to all my comments and even a simple hello helps my engagement and lets YouTube see that people like my video enough to engage with it and therefore show it for more people to see. I have all of my social media links in the description such as my Twitch, Patreon, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and more. I also have links to the supplies I use in this video. And last but not least, the links to the sources I use for the info that I shared in this video. Thank you guys Guys so much for watching stay creative and I'll see you in next Friday's video and I would love to have you join my little creative critter community <laughs>